all the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. All the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. And it's another chapter from Read With Me Bible. And it's always good to teach your kids about Lord Jesus Christ so they can have a strong foundation in the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For knowing God gives you strength and it helps you get through the most hardest times in life. I promise you. For I've been there. And if I didn't have Lord Jesus Christ, I don't know where I would be right now. But let's begin. And uh, we're going to continue where we left off. Now... We're on the 10th plague, and if you want to read more about this, you can check out Exodus chapter 12 from the King James Version of the Holy Bible, or you can check out the book of Jasher. The Jasher book of Jasher goes in very much in detail about this as well, and it's up to you if you want to read the book of Jasher or your Bible, but also remember to make sure that it's God that's leading you, not your flesh. So, let's begin and always ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and guide you and lead you to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I'm sorry for the shadow, but this is just the window. That's how the sunlight is coming in. Alright, let's begin. Moses sent for the elders of Israel. He said, each man must give a lamb for each family. The animals must be a year old. Now, this is the first Passover. This is how the Passover started. Kill the lambs when the sun goes down. Take some of the blood. Put it on the door frames of the houses. The Lord will pass through the land to strike the Egyptians down. He'll see the blood on the door frame. He'll pass over that house. He won't let the destroying angel kill you. The people of Israel did what the Lord commanded. Now this is a, what you would say, a foreshadowing of Lord Jesus Christ. Because when he died on the cross for our sins, he shed his precious blood for us. And those that are covered in his blood, now it's a spiritual blood you're covered with. It's not like you're getting out and going over and killing a lamb and, cut and you know putting that blood on. You're putting the spiritual blood of Lord Jesus Christ on. And that you are protected from God's wrath. And that God's judgments won't befall you. But if you read Psalm 91, you'll know that you'll see the judgments all around you coming to the wicked. Those that are living in wickedness, who, who took in the mark of the beast, or are just walking in wickedness and turn their back on God. They're going to have the judgments of God on them. They're going to have the wrath of God on them. Because they forsook the Lord. That's why you want to be covered in the blood. Because, as you can see here with the Egyptians, the Egyptians didn't have their door frames covered in the blood of the lamb, did they? No, they didn't. They were walking in the ways of the world, following small g gods. There were demons, fallen angels, and Lucifer himself. And it wasn't, they're not going to protect you. The devil ain't going to protect you from nothing. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't know all he cares about is himself. He's, he's pure evil. He's a mass of evil and he's always a pile of lies. He's a father of lies. He doesn't care about anyone. There's people who really believe that Satan's going to take care of them, protect them. That's all an illusion. He's not going to do anything to you. He's lying to you. He's lying like a rug. So as you can see here in this picture, the Israelites were painting their door frames with the blood of of the lamb so the, the lamb of a year old was sacrificed and its blood was painted onto the door frames and so the, that when the destroying angel came the angel would see the blood of the lamb on their door frames and the angel would go by but for the Egyptians they didn't have it on their door frames and so guess what the destroying angel it hit their homes and you don't want the destroying angel at your home that's why you need to be covered in, in the blood of the lamb the Lamb who was slain on Calvary, Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you want to accept him as your Savior and be covered in his blood. And walk in his ways. For if you love Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart and soul, you're going to bear fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's continue. At midnight, the Lord struck down every oldest son in Egypt. There was loud crying. Because someone had died in every home. 
During the night, Pharaoh sent for Moses. He said, Get out of here. Leave my people. Take your flocks and herds go. So the Pharaoh, he had a son. He had a firstborn son that he loved very, very much. He loved his son. It says in the Bible, you know, about how the wicked give, you know, give good gifts to their children. He loved his son. And, he, you know, he was hoping his son would one day be the future Pharaoh after him. But guess what? His son was hit by the destroying angel because his he wasn't walking with the Lord. And he had no fellowship with him. His heart was as hardened and as cold and icy as, as ice on Pluto. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't good. And, and when he lost his son, that humbled him. That humbled his spirit to be able to let go of the Israelites and their animals and to let them go. And to really mean it. Whereas when all the other plagues happened, he just, he said it only because he wanted to get rid of the plagues. And then he turned around and hardened his heart and kept the, and told the uh, Israelites they couldn't go. Or after the three days of darkness, he said that they could go, but they had to leave their animals behind. So now his heart is completely softened. And as times get harder and more troubles happen and more, you know, more tribulation happens and things get harder and harder and harder as the years go by, your heart will be softened for those that are hard, are hardened. There may be their hearts will start to soften up a bit or get harder. Like the Pharaoh did all the way up until the last plague, his heart got harder and harder and harder. Or you could end up like the Pharaoh did in the last one, end up softened. For those who have not taken the mark, there you have a chance to be saved and be redeemed. But it is their free will and they have the choice they have the choice to accept jesus into their heart or to reject him they have free will god isn't going to go against your free will i will guarantee you that he's not going to force you to to do anything if you don't want to do it he's not going to force you to it but there'll be repercussions though just like there's repercussions for taking the mark if you choose to freely will take the mark and have yahweh removed from your dna and have Lucifer sitting in your house, in your temple, your holy temple, your holy temple, which is your body. That is your free choice. Just like it's your free choice if you're a lion and you want to be a lioness. But remember, there's re there's repercussions for all of it. And turn to the Lord before it's too late. I'll be back as the Lord leads. <laughs>